Hey guys, it is time for another discussion of The Expanse Season 5. We are up to The Expanse Season 5, Episode 7, and we are nearing the end. There are just three episodes left after this one. If you haven't already checked it out, I've been doing this every week, so go back and watch my other The Expanse recap videos. Now, this is where I break down the episode, but I also give a review as well. So there are going to be major spoilers. If you guys have not watched this episode yet, do not continue on. Just don't do it unless you want to be spoiled, but I don't know why you would want to, especially with a show like The Expanse. So bookmark this, come back later, go watch The Expanse episode, season five, episode seven, and then come back. I'm ready to talk about it because there's a lot of amazing things that happen in this episode. Let's get into it. Hey, it's Tessa from Mama's Geeky here. Thank you so much for stopping by my YouTube channel. Okay, so like I said, fair warning, guys, there are some major spoilers for The Expanse Season 5, Episode 7 in this video. But man, this is one of my favorite episodes of the season. I feel like I'm saying that every week, but every week this show just gets better and better and better. I, I am dying to read the books. I have the books and just, oh, I can't wait, but I want to wait until the series is all wrapped up so that I don't spoil anything. So this episode starts off with Marco and Philip talking, okay? Listen, Philip's been spending a lot of time with Naomi. Marco's not exactly thrilled about that. You know, he's not a giant fan of hers. And so he kind of tries to pry and he talks a little bit about the ship your mother gave you and it's a piece of junk and I didn't know if you had any sentimental things for it. You know, he's basically prying. It's what it seems like. He's trying to get exactly how Philip feels. And I don't know that anyone knows how Philip feels, even Philip, because Philip seems to be going back and forth between his father and his mother. And that continues on in this episode, okay? Marco wants to know where Philip's allegiances lie. And like I said, I don't even think Philip knows where his own allegiances lie. So after a little talk between Marco and Philip, Marco decides to go and see Naomi. He pulls this whole, I was so in love with you. Um, you know, you had a hold on me type of thing. But I don't know. It seems like BS to me. Um, and it kind of seems like BS to Naomi as well. He says, you know, I took Philip because I wanted it to make you stay. And Naomi's basically like, mm -mm. and by the way, Holden is everything that you pretend to be. So, which is the great way to get back at a man is tell him that your new man is even better than him. So that's basically what she does. And Marco is not a fan of this at, at all. Despite their going back and forth, Marco says, hey, you are free to walk about the ship now. Just listen, don't touch anything uh, on the ship and don't touch anybody on the ship or you're going out the airlock uh, because we all know that she knocked Sin upside the head with a wrench, grabbed his phone and warned Holden about the bomb that was put in the Rossi. So what is the first thing Naomi does when she gets out? She actually goes to see Philip. She goes and they have a, a really good conversation. I mean, he's impressed at this point that she saved a lot of Belter lives because they've talked about that. He talk, she talked about her time with Drummer and what they did together. So uh, I think Philip is really a big fan of that. So he's giving his mom more and more chances. They talk about other stuff. Like she talks about how she had big dreams for him when he was a baby and how after Marco took him away from her, uh, that it changed her dreams. And now he has become this killer and her dreams are just basically that she's, she's really afraid of all the regret that he's going to have further on in life. Uh, she actually specifically says to him, killing people does not mean you are strong, which seems to be what Marco is teaching Philip. Philip gets angry, starts to say that, you know, he doesn't need Naomi or Marco in his life. Uh, again, kind of pointing to that internal struggle that he has going on between his mother and his father. And who does he choose? He has to choose one. Um, and, and what's it going to be? Uh, they do end up having a great moment, though. Um, Naomi explains to him that uh, she she believes in him and, um, you know, that, that Marco really just absolutely broke her when he took her, took Philip as a baby away from, away from her. Um, he, Philip ends up hugging her, crying on her shoulder, uh, asks why she left. And Naomi explains again, listen, I did not leave you. Your father took you. I spent months trying to find you. And when I realized I wasn't going to be able to find you, I almost killed myself. I went down to the docks. I went into an airlock and I was about to jettison myself out. I was about to do it. I was about to kill myself. And I realized it's not going to change your life. You were going to grow up without a mother no matter what. Um, and, and she decided, you know, to live, uh, at that point and maybe hopefully she'd be able to find him again in the future. She said walking away was the only choice she had. 
And then she does even say it's the only choice any of us have. Again, trying to put it into her son's head that maybe he should leave Marco. Now let's flash over to uh, the Rossi. Um, so we get back to the Rossi and we get a lot of good time with the Rossi. We didn't see them much at all last episode. So I was really excited to see them come back into it. I love Holden. Um, and who doesn't love the Rossi? Come on. So the Rossi is still out looking for the Zemea, um, following along its flight plan, hoping to find the proto-molecule sample. Monica does say, hey, what are you guys going to do? Talking to Holden and Bull. What are you guys going to do if you get the proto-molecule sample? And they both say, we're going to destroy it. That's the plan. Uh, Fred Johnson is the one who didn't want to destroy it. We do. Uh, and she says, all right, good, because I've put out some feelers. Uh, if they're, it's ever going to exchange hands, I'm going to hear about it, and I'll let you guys know. Uh, she leaves, and Bull and, and Holden kind of have a little bit of a conversation where Holden talks about how he never really trusted Fred, uh, but he should have because he never lied to him, uh, and that he was actually a good man. Um but then they end up, this is really awesome, and this was really exciting. They get interrupted by a, um, a transmission from Alex. As we know, Alex and Bobby are out. They have just discovered that uh, Marco is getting these Martian warships and what is going on there. Uh, they're not 100% sure, but they do know that. So they end up uh, getting a transmission, and they say, hey, we're headed back to Tycho. Me and Bobby are heading back to Tycho. Uh, we had a lot of talk to lot to talk about when I get there. But Holden's like, wait a minute, there's not much of a delay. He's supposed to be on Mars, but he must be pretty close by. So he sends a message back to Alex and Bobby. And I love this because it's almost like they're on the phone, but they're sending transmissions back and forth. Uh, but it's so quick. And I like that. So because we're not having to wait a long time in between them getting, um, receiving these transmissions. So Alex and Bobby get their message from Holden. And he says, hey, listen, the Rossi's not on Tycho. Uh, there was an attack on Tycho and uh, Marco has the protomolecule and we're chasing it down. So Alex and Bobby decide, well, they better get, um, remember they got the ship's profiles when they were trailing the Martians earlier? Well, they say, we got to send it to, to Holden. We're going to send it over to the Rossi. It could be a help. Um, so they do that and they kind of give them a little bit of what's been going on. Well, now Holden sees that and they see Naomi's ship amongst uh, the, the free Navy ships. And so Holden ca calls back and says, listen, I can't change course. I got to be following the proto molecule, but guess what? Marco kidnapped Naomi. I see Naomi's ship in, in this collection of ship profiles. Can you please keep an eye on her? And so Alex and Bobby, of course, accept and change, uh, the course right away so that they can go, uh, and keep an eye on things. Uh, so they're headed towards the free Navy now, which um, I really, really like. So uh, because Holden can't, right? Holden has to take on chasing down the proto molecule. So uh, Monica and Holden are having this conversation and they realize, well, what is they doing with the proto molecule? And they start to put pieces together and they start to assume uh, perhaps correctly that Marco is planning to trade the proto molecule for these warships. So he's going to give Mars the proto molecule. They think, uh, they also have Cortazar who is his, the Cortazar, Cortazar, you guys know who I'm talking about the, basically the proto molecule scientist. Uh, and so are they going to hand him over? How's that going to work? Um, because one is not good without the other type of thing. Uh, and then, and then they get interrupted as Rossi, uh, the Rossi does locate the Zemea goes after him, shooting a ton of missiles. The Zemea is shooting a ton of missiles at the Rossi. The Rossi is getting by them all or blowing them all up. And then Holden says, listen, I don't know what's going on. Um, instead of destroying this ship and the proto molecule, why don't we board it? Uh, so I can get information about Naomi. Monica's clearly ticked off about this. She does not think this is a good idea. Um, but they don't even have to worry about it because before he can get any information from them, uh, or board them, uh, this may have explodes. Now, did they explode themselves? Did Marco explode them? I don't know yet. I don't think we know yet. Um, but now back on to Marco's ship. He knows that this may has been found by the Rossi and he is not happy. He's just mad altogether. He calls Naomi in and he says, Hey, listen, I got a plan. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to use your ship as bait. Uh, I'm mad at the Rossi. So I'm going to send your ship out. We're going to lure the, the Rossi in and then we're going to blow up the Rossi. And this is all inspired by Philip because just moments before that, Philip has talked to Marco and asked to have his own ship to command. Uh, he says he wants Belters to know his name. Marco actually 
lists everything he's ever messed up, talks very badly towards his son, and says, you know, Belters will not be chanting your name until I am gone. You are my heir. Once I am gone, then and only then will they be chanting your name. Uh, so Philip, which leaves this in this spot where Philip's like, what? Uh, again, you know, he doesn't know who to trust, his dad or his mom. They're both kind of not really being 100% with him, although his mother seems to be getting much better. Um, and, and he's just not sure where he is uh, with that. I don't understand how he could still support his father after what his father said to him, but somehow he does. And now they are telling Naomi that they are going to send her ship out as a lure in for the Rossi in order to destroy her new family. And uh, Marco says this was inspired by Philip. Uh, he, he wants the Belters to know his name, so they're going to know that he is the one that destroyed the Rossi. Kind of putting Philip again in a horrible spot. Uh, well, Naomi decides this is it. She, she This is what it looks like to us as we're watching it. The viewers were like, Naomi is broken again. She walks herself to an airlock. Uh, Sin is, is does not want uh, that to happen this time. Uh, he's already put her through so much. He's chasing after her. Uh, when she goes out the airlock. She literally puts herself out the airlock without any protection. Sin dies right away. Uh, she has this thing in her hand and she stabs herself with it. Um, and she ends up getting to her ship. Uh, and that's what we see. We see her, her, Philip is watching her push herself out the airlock, uh, but she does make it to her ship in time. So does this mean she's going to be able to stop the plan against the Rossi? We don't know. We will find out in the future, but this episode was just so great. I love that our characters are, even though they are spread apart, they are starting to come together. Uh, they are really starting to work together towards this common goal of, of just getting rid of Marco. Uh, now everyone knows kind of where Naomi is, so she's not in as much danger. Um, hopefully that we'll see more of Amos. I mean, I know we will, but right now he's still on Earth, and we didn't get him at all in this episode. Unfortunately, he is one of my favorite characters. Uh, but Alex and Bobby are on their way there, and now, of course, now that this may is a exploded i'm sure holden is going to find his way there as well so we are coming towards the end with three episodes left i cannot wait to talk to you next week about the expanse season five episode eight as we get closer and closer to the finale um you guys let me know what you think about this episode down below in the comments be sure to give me a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on more videos like this one like i said i'm coming to you every week through The Expanse Season 5, and I cannot wait to talk about next week's episode with you guys. I've already seen it. We'll talk about it next week. Thanks for taking the time to watch this, guys. Don't forget to follow me over on Instagram and Twitter. I'm at Mama's Geeky over there, M-A-M-A-S-G-E-E-K-Y. Thanks, guys.